when I first started working in the Wayne Gretzky years, I don't recall see, ever seeing another woman in the <clears throat> press box or the dressing room at that time. And now they're in the NFL, they're anchoring, they're doing play by play. The long were the days when Shirley Fischler had to take the NHL to court to get access to uh, even the press box. <laughs> it seems so ridiculous that what it took as long as it did. I think people are just creatures of habit more than anything. A lot of times I, I like to think that a lot of it wasn't really intentional. It's just kind of like, it's the way it is and nobody wanted to change it and everybody wanted to keep it the way it was. So often people say to me, you know, how has it been? Do the athletes have an issue? The athletes have never had an issue dealing with women. Honestly, they, they are at the pinnacle of their sport and they really just want things done correctly. It's never been the athletes. Going back to when I first got in the business, our big clients were Doug Gilmore, Grant Buer, Brian Fogarty, Cam Neely, Yannick was an early client, and they never had an issue. It was really the men that were in the business side of things that were, I think, a little bit threatened, right? Not knowing, what does this mean? Is this going to mean my job's going to be, you know, is this job taking, putting my job in jeopardy or anything like that, which was very interesting because honestly, the athletes, because most of my clients are male, I've often been the first one to know when they're getting engaged, when they're getting married, when they're having a baby, they have an issue um, getting divorced. They will confide in you in a different way. And I think that specifically for the agency I was working for at the time, they realized that pretty quickly. When I worked at Wolf Associates, I had a boss who was not afraid of strong women and actually liked to surround himself with strong women. He was the kind of guy you could go to and say, hey, I have this idea. I think we should be doing X, Y, Z. It would make us better, stronger, more organized and go do it. Make it happen. He, he realized by having these strong women around that it created a stronger bond with the clients because the relationship between sort of the male counterpart agent that might be doing the team contract part and me that they would, they often didn't know anything about the player other than what time are you playing tonight? Or, oh, you know, it's a great game. You had a couple goals, three, three assists, whatever it was. They weren't relating on the same level. And it was really, I think, resulting in much stronger relationships and longer you know, representation. These guys weren't leaving agents. They were staying. I was very lucky in that I worked in an agency that really, I think, empowered the women that were there. There weren't many of us. We weren't all doing the same thing. There were a few, I would say, three women that were in the 50-person company, probably three women that were at a higher level of an executive role, one in consulting, one in kind of doing sales more on the business side of it, but the consulting side, and, and then me.